Would you have a Neuralink chip implanted in your brain? Yeah. Um, I think use case right now is use a mouse, right? I can already do that. And so there's no value proposition. Uh, on safety grounds alone, sure, i would do it tomorrow. You know, you say the use case of the mouse. Because after like researching all this, and part of it is just watching Nolan have so much fun. If you can get that bits per second like really high with the mouse, like being able to interact. Because if you think about the, the way the on the smartphone, the way you swipe, that was transformational. Yeah. How we interact with the thing. It's subtle. You don't realize it, but to be able to touch a phone and to uh, scroll with your finger, that's like, that changed everything. They, they, people were sure you need a keyboard to type. And the, that, uh, there's a lot of HCI aspects to that that changed how we interact with computers. So there could be a certain rate of speed with the yeah. mouse that would change everything. Yeah. It's like you might be able to just click around a screen extremely fast. And that, if it, I, I can't see myself getting a neural link for much more rapid interaction with the digital devices. Yeah, I think recording speech intentions from the brain might might change things as well. You know, the value proposition for the average person. Um, a keyboard is a pretty clunky human interface, requires a lot of training. It's, you know, highly variable in the maximum performance that the average person can uh, can achieve. Uh, I think taking that out of the equation and just having a natural, you know, word to computer interface uh, might change things for a lot of people. It'd be hilarious if that is the reason people do it. Even if you have speech to text that's extremely accurate, it currently isn't. Right. But it's say gotten super accurate. It'd be hilarious if people went for Neuralink just so you avoid the embarrassing aspect of speaking, like looking like a douchebag speaking to your phone in public, which is a real, like, that's a real constraint. Yeah, I mean, with a bone conducting case uh, that can be a, a, an invisible headphone, say, um, and the ability to think words into software and have it respond to you, um, you know, that starts to sound sort of like embedded super intelligence you know if you can silently ask for the wikipedia article on any subject and have it read to you without any observable change happening in the outside world uh you know for one thing standardized testing is obsolete <laughs> yeah if it's done well on the ux side it could change i don't know if it transforms society but it really uh can create a kind of shift in the way we interact with di digital devices in the way that a smartphone did. Yeah, I would, um, just having to look into the safety of everything involved, I, I would totally try it. So it doesn't have to go to some like incredible thing where you have, it connects your vision or to some other, like it connects all over your brain. That could be like just connecting to the hand knob. Uh, you might have a lot of interesting interaction, com human computer interaction possibilities. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, and the technology on the academic side is progressing at light speed here. I think there was a really amazing paper out of UC Davis, uh, Sergei Stavisky's lab, that basically made an initial solve of speech decode. It was something like 125,000 words uh, that they were getting with you know, very high accuracy, which is... So you're just thinking the word? Yeah. Thinking the word and you're able to get it. Yeah. Oh boy. Like you have to have the intention of speaking it. Right. So like do that inner voice. Man, it was, it's so amazing to me that you can do the intention, the signal mapping. All you have to do is just imagine yourself doing it. And if, if you get the feedback that it actually worked, you can get really good at that. Like your brain will first of all adjust and you, you develop like any other skill. Yeah. Like touch typing, you develop in that same kind of way. That is, that is to, to me, it's just really fascinating yeah. to be able to even to play with that. Honestly, like I would get a Neuralink just to be able to play with that. Just to play with the capacity, the capability of my mind to learn this skill. 
It's like learning the skill of typing or learning the skill of moving a mouse. It's another skill of moving the mouse, not with my physical body, but with my mind. I can't wait to see what people do with it. I feel like we're right. we're cavemen right now. We're we're like banging rocks with a stick and thinking that we're making music. Um, at some point, when these are more widespread, there's going to be the equivalent of a of a piano that you know someone someone can make art with their brain in a way that we didn't even anticipate. Um, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Give it to like a teenager. Like anytime I think I'm good at something, I'll always go to like. I don't know, even even uh, even with the, the, the bits per second and playing a video game, you realize you give it to a teenager, you give a neural link to a teenager, just a large number of them, the kind of stuff, you, <laughs> they get good at stuff. They're gonna get like hundreds of uh, bits per second. Yeah. Even just with the current technology. Probably, <laughs> probably. Just, because uh, it's also addicting how, like how the, the the number go up aspect of it, of like improving and training, because it is, it's almost like a skill. And yeah. plus there's a software on the other end that adapts to you. And especially if the adapting procedure, the algorithm becomes better and better and better, you like learning together. Yeah, we're scratching the surface on that right now. There's so much more to do.